Okay, we're looking at the precious picture of Stafford's little girl. Oh my gosh, happy birthday. It was her birthday? It was her birthday yesterday. She yesterday. turned five years old. The big five. Yes. Aww. She is a little girl now. We got her ears pierced. <gasps> that was a big day. Yes. So you had a date. We had a date. Yeah. We picked her up for lunch. Yeah. Uh, had lunch together, me, yeah. her, and, and her mom. Uh-huh. And drove to Opelousas. Aww. It's a thrifted way pharmacy. Yeah. Uh, and got her ears pierced. And she didn't budge. I, I was on the verge of tears just from <laughs> right. my anxiety. Right, right, right. Because, right. <laughs> look, at the end of the day, mm-hmm. piercing and tattoos and all that stuff, that's, that's actual, that's body modification, yes, right? Yes, right. And the fact that I'm doing it to a five-year-old at times makes me feel weird when what? I say that loud. No, no, I'm with you. But, I feel you. But she did great. It was a phenomenal day. I don't think she's listening, but if you could hear this morning, happy birthday, Olivia, and Aww. I love you. Aww. That's no, awesome. Right. And she happy didn't even birthday, flinch. Olivia. Never flinched. She goes, it stung a little, but I'm fine. And then had a biggest smile on her face and wanted to show them to everybody. I know. Her little smile. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I cried. Big. The gym? <laughs> I remember. But it was only like for one second, because after you know it pops you, you're like... Oh, okay. But dude, I clearly remember. So <laughs> that Olivia, she's a tough gal. She's but a beast. she smiled. I mean, that, that was the best part. <laughs> so yes, happy birthday. All right. So our panelists are here. They're back in studio. I'm back in studio. Rob, he ran away again. No, no. He has, um, he went to speak to, he was invited to speak before uh, the Rotary Club South today. So yeah. he is over there this yeah. morning. So he's out of the building. Well, he's but safe. That's a nice group to speak to. I know. They're really nice guys. <laughs> now, the Beaver Club, on the other hand, you want to take a shield with you. You do. You're absolutely right. <laughs> Those guys right. are so funny. But anyway, they Rotary, are funny, but they can be mean, too. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding, no, Beaver Club people. They're great. They are. My husband is a member. That's why I can say that. I, but they're, they do have fun, too. You oh, know? Yeah, they have a great time. But ro- mm-hmm. ro- the Rotary Club, they're very good. I'm, good I'm a Rotarian folks. in the big club, the one, the downtown club. The downtown that club. That we now the meet room. in the oil center. <laughs> yeah. It's big. So, Stafford Barnett and Warren Cottle and Carol Ross, they're all in their places with their happy, shiny faces. So let's change that and argue. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start with Warren this morning. You get to be first. Okay. A Baton Rouge company. Taking over the management, some of the management duties of LUS. Is it for sale? Is it not for sale? They're now saying no, it would just be the management side. So, all right, we want to know what you think about this whole idea. Why now? What's happening? What have you heard? What have you read? Warren, take it for us. What do you think? The thought of selling LUS has been in the wind for probably decades, not just a few years. I go back a few years ago, probably 12, 15 years ago, Ernie Alexander told me that Mark Mouton, who I think was on the LUS group of the councilmen, said that LUS at that point was valued at $700 million. Now, whether that was right, wrong, or indifferent, I don't know. But sometimes it wouldn't make sense to uh, to sell a thing, take the money, and uh, the private company then would become a taxpaying entity. And so, you know, there's there's all the different things that you have to weigh. One of the things that I don't necessarily agree with is the fact of bringing in a management firm to come in and manage it. I think that um, some of the things that that brought about this recent deal was was a lot of the accounting and that's going on with LUS and fiber optics and that there was a lot of money that was unaccounted for. There was a lot of money that was paid that, that LUS paid fiber for services they didn't get and all this kind of such stuff. It was bought out by auditors. And so they split the two. And uh, that probably makes a lot of sense because if, if it, number one rule in business, if you can't stand alone, it doesn't need to be in business. And so, uh, you know, I think that's where a lot of this came from. Then the sale of it, I mean, people have argued about the fact that it was done more or less in secrecy and all that. Well, that's the way they always are. They're, they're never, never negotiated out in public, even on family private sales and public sales both. All right. Carol. Well, it's a public entity. And so all of that information should have been up front and it, it especially should have been expressed to the council, to the legislative body. That has a, and to the LPUA, the Utilities Authority. Uh, they had that meeting last night. It went very long, and uh, you can see the interest in not uh, selling or 
having an outside company come in to manage our utility system. No, they don't want the utility system. They only want electric. They only want the profitable part, which, by the way, <clears throat> many of the bonds that were issued for LUS Fiber, and, and I think that uh, Robodeau has thrown out that $1.7 million as a diversion. He is working a deal with some of his friends, and some of his friends are going to make money. As I said on my show yesterday, uh, nobody, you know, nobody gets paid until the deal is made. And when you look back at that, this has been negotiated in secret for over a year. And that even if he now backs off and says, well, we may put it out, request for proposals to all a bunch of companies. Well, Bernhardt is still going to have the in-house uh, inside track because they've been doing this research for over a year. And, you know, just connecting the dots, it's a really complicated thing. Yeah. So connecting the dots becomes uh, very interesting when you look at all the players and what has gone on in the past, and you wonder what really has been going on here. But I think the interest at the LPUA, I watched, I wasn't able to go last night, I had some family issues dealing with, but uh, Mark Pope is going to be on my program this afternoon giving me a full report about exactly what, was, uh, what went on. But you could see that the members of the LPUA were not happy that they were not brought into this. They are the governing authority of the utility system, and they were, they were kept in the dark. Uh, so, uh, you know... Very interesting. Okay, Stafford, your turn. All right, so I'm going to give you what, what's actually happening. So, <laughs> uh, look, what, the, what Bernhard does professionally, uh, Bernhard Capital Group, is they go to facilities that produce their own power, and they look at it and they say, hey, we can do this more efficiently, <clears throat> and we have the capital to invest. Um, and so if you look at the majority of the plants in Lake Charles, they run what's called cogen operations. It's cogenerations. Um, they partner with a, with another utility provider there. They put a power manufacturing facility on site. They're building one right now down south of Franklin um, where they make their own power for the plant. The plant purchases power from them because they're using the same material to make power that they are to make their end product. So they've got natural gas on site. They can pump it in, make their own power. Whatever they don't use, they sell back to the utility. Whatever they peak and go over their consumption of that ability, uh, that machine's ability to produce, they turn around and sell back to the uh, the the company who turns around and sells it to residences and other commercial facilities there. So Bernhard's specialty is long-term capital investments in plants that might be, um, in this scenario, uh, inefficient. Now, uh, let's be clear, LUS does not produce the majority of the power that it sells to the consumer that it sells electricity to. Okay, so I think right now we're, we're averaging about 40% production uh, and 60% uh, purchasing in from other places. Um, our cost per kilowatt hour coming out of one of the, our coal plant in Boyce, I think is five and a half cents. Um, the potential for natural gas, I think right now is three and a half cents. And if you mix in some some... Uh, of the successful wind, ener wind energies, I don't know if it's it's able to happen here. Um, you can get that down to three cents per kilowatt hour, and they're turning around and selling that to the consumer for a profit. So let's let's back up real quick. Uh, LUS is not for sale; it's never been for sale. The letter that was signed with Bernhard was a non-binding agreement for them to come in and take a look. Last year, uh, or earlier this year. Uh, LUS came to the council with a potential for $240 million in bonds to look at the Boyce plant, which is a coal plant, to turn it into a natural gas plant to become more efficient and to save money. That got shot down, uh, and, and it got pulled off the table, and I think that's part of the reason that, that Terry is retiring. Uh, but let's be clear, that Boyce plant that we own, we are paying somebody to manage that right now, which is Clico. So Clico owns part of that plant. They're managing it. Bernhardt's taking a look at trying to get in there. And, and so let me back up. I don't think that this is a terrible business proposal. Uh, that being said, it would still have to go to the council and would still have to go to the voters. And I don't think it's ever going to pass. I don't really support that much. I think that we can do it better ourselves. The history of Lafayette and the history of LUS LUS was built because we kept getting skipped over as a community for power. We Just like we got skipped over for high-speed broadband internet access, that's why we built fiber, and it's done great things for our community. So I don't see it, get make, I don't see it making it out of count, council to the citizens. Um, that being said, I think Joel could have handled this a lot better. 
Okay. Well, Carol, we don't know exactly how it started out because it was done in secret and it started over a year ago before anything came known. So why sign the letter of intent in April of 2018 to, to, when you started the negotiation in 2017? That's number one. Bernhardt is a venture capital group. They are in it to make money. They have benchmarks that they've set out in this agreement. If they don't meet those benchmarks, then what happens? The rates go up and the citizens have no input and neither huh. does... We Excuse don't have an me. agreement to sell power. Let me finish. There's a non binding agreement to do, a, to do look. Finish. We don't have any control over any of that. Right now, we have some input and some control. Their, their motive is profit. Good for them. We have a well functioning Lafayette utility system. If you look into the research around the country, and Terry Huval has said this publicly, it's never worked when they've tried to privatize a system like ours. It just has never worked. The other thing is, Electric quite often has to subsidize over the years, not as much now as they did, water and sewage. What happens there? Our rates for water and sewage will go up. And so uh, I think there's a lot of diversionary stuff going on here. But when you look at all the players in this deal, it doesn't pass the smell test. Warren, you had some follow-up, too? Yeah, you know, I mean, the thing is convoluted, and a lot of things that the Stafford is talking about that, that Bernhardt can come in here and do and all that, there's a lot of that stuff that you can do yourself, and there's a lot of other companies out there who do the same thing, too. I mean, we're already doing parts of it he's talking about, like with the Coleco and uh, the Boise plant, and that, you know, the, the, the part about using electricity, producing your own, and then selling it back mm-hmm. to the utility. I mean, people can do that at their house if you have a generator or wind power, solar power, or whatever, yeah. you know. Yeah, because the solar yeah. people you know, are doing but, that. But, but doing here's that. the one Correct. thing that I would like to say is that if you really want to take a look at selling the thing, then it needs to be marketed like they <laughs> normally market them. You go out there and you get an investment banking firm, mm-hmm. and they come in, and then they turn around and... and and you just put it up for bid. So open it to everybody well, from the sale. beginning. Okay, from it's not the, for sale. But even the well, management look, side of it. You don't know how it started, Just go, just go look. It started in secret. You don't know how it started. You, you can started. go read the non. First off, very important to note here. We're, get, we're getting worked up about a non-biting letter of agreement. It's a due diligence letter to say, hey, we want to go in and uh, take a look at your me. operations. They've been in there doing due diligence we, we, for over a year. Trust me, I know that. It takes a long time to do due diligence on a plan. why the letter of intent now? The new delivery tip was signed earlier in the up. year. Look, in April. On, I'm talking on. about April where was so, the, 2017. My big question is, where was the LPUA and all hold this? Yes, exactly. They weren't informed. They should have been brought yeah. in Why were they not? So, so, yeah. so well, think, well, about, what gonna, we, think about what we've told the mayor through our voting habits, right? Through our voting habits, we've told the mayor that he, we want him to do more with our money without without us, without us without us. Without us giving him any more money, right? So that's why they proposed a tax for, for a drainage pulling money out of the mosquito fund. We've, we've shot down things that would be logical for us to say yes to. We've shot down as a well, community. That's, but that's your opinion. So that, that's my right? opinion, right. Okay. So when Joel sees this and he goes, hey, we either got to go bond out a quarter of a billion dollars. Like you've to, had a lot of conversations with Joel about his. I haven't had a single conversation it. with him. Oh, but so I work you're in the electric. I work to him that you haven't even. I work in the electrical industry though, so I have a pretty good understanding of how this stuff works. Oh, excellent! So that, but you that, haven't talked that, to Joel about his inner thinking. So I haven't talked to a single. You're thing about representing him. his thinking on this is really uh, disingenuous. I'm not a representative, Joel. You just said you just well, said he's Joel's saying what he thinks. I'm is telling you what I see. Period. I mean, and so and so that being said, when he gets told this kind of stuff. He goes, hey, maybe it's time that we look at selling some toxic, toxic assets. And look, the coal plant is a toxic asset. The cost of the lignite facility that we have there to maintain with the EPA is and not cheap. And if it all was good, if, it, and if all of that was good and happy, my question else. is about LPUA. If it's all good and all the intentions were else. good, if all the intentions were good, where was the LPUA? I Follow think up? what we're doing here is we're arguing over semantics. And, and, and play on <laughs> words and talking about the difference between a, a non-binding letter of intent, non-binding letter mm-hmm. of agreement, and all this kind of stuff. And I've been involved with probably 200 le- non-binding letters of agreements on sales and all that kind of such okay. stuff. All of these things are always done in secret. Somebody's going to come in and going to say, hey, can we take a look at this, blah, blah, blah. And someone can say, well, perhaps, what do you want to do? Anyway, it, it, it morphs its way into that. But normally, norm, and then you have you may have a one buyer comes in there and you never show it to anybody else. That's done a lot. But then on the other hand, normally when you sell something, whether it's done a, a family business or a publicly traded entity or whatever, something that's worth a lot of money, you're going to go out there, you're going to decide you want to put it up, up for sale, You then you engage like an investment banking firm who will go out there, then they will then do the due diligence on it up mm-hmm. to a point. 
and they will market it, and then those people will come in there and sign all the non-disclosure, confidentiality, non-circumvention mm-hmm, agreements, mm-hmm. non-binding letters of intent, and all of that. You set up your 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 data room, and now it's virtual data room where that those companies who sign on to it get access to all those records. Every tax return that's ever been filed, right. every quarterly report, all of that, on and on and on. And then they turn around, and then they'll they'll turn in bids on a certain point. And that's the way that Exxon bought mobile. That's the way that, that Delta bought uh, uh, whatever it was, the, mm-hmm. the uh, it, except Northwest. Except U.S. is not for sale. But it, it, well, look, it, if it's, it's not, not for, for sale, sale right it, now, if it's it not, can't be put for sale without a vote of the people, period. Well, no, but but the point of it is, the you, point can, he's you, making you can, is you can, you can, though. you can engage people to come in and take a look at it and to right. make offers on it. And if an venture capital firm is going to come in, take the thing over, put in long term capital, do long term management. To me, that's pretty damn close to a sale. Okay. It's, now they, they might yes. now look what they might do, which is what Bernhard is trying to do, is purchase the coal facility and Boyce and turn around and get a long-term contract to sell power to LUS. That's a common thing in the electrical of production it's industry. it's a common thing. It's a if common thing in for, all If business. they can make it for three and a half cents and turn around and sell it to the LUS oh, for five and a half. Christ, it's well, a common sure. thing in all business. Right. But so, so, so stop saying that LUS is for sale because that's not LUS. Uh, may I say okay, something? Can I really let's say, say, okay, let's but, say this. Let's say this. It's not a stock company. It's not going to be for sale. But what they're going to do is they're going to come in. They're going to buy the assets. And they're going to manage the, 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 the end product and all that. It's the same Thing. I think that's kind of the point he's driving at is that and at the end of the day, do the people who have paid into this system, do they truly benefit from that? And what about going forward? Same thing. We didn't sell the company. We merged. Right. Oh, oh what's the difference? Right, right, right. Okay. I so, would Carol, say one thing. We don't really know how this started out. And I believe it did start out as a possible sale. That's number one. Mm-hmm. Number two, when the heat came down, I said, I believe okay. when the heat came down and Robida would not confirm one way or the other until it got so hot and then he said because when they somebody pointed out to the charter it would have to go to a vote of the people it wasn't looking like a good deal right then he came back and he said it's not for sale we're going to put it up for management Uh, we don't know because he has not been transparent in any way, shape, or so form. So what you're we saying is... We agree on that, by the way. Yeah. I agree 100% yeah, he did that, say Joel, that, at the end that Joel has of his screwed the pooch on this with the <laughs> transparency. <laughs> but Stafford just threw it right out there. He screwed the pooch is what Stafford said. You know, because what you're saying is it just... Because it stinks. It's Here's the deal. It, it, I, I don't... I think that at some point... LUS has to be better at power generation if they're going to stay in the power generation game. So going forward, you think that is their best uh, game plan? Well, I will think, for my personal this. opinion, my personal opinion is we need to invest off. our own money into greener technology mm-hmm. to lower our into, our into proven, cost, proven technology. Proven, proven they are looking mm-hmm. at doing all that at the boys' plant. When Trump came in and did and said we don't we don't have a war on coal anymore. It's more cost effective right now, right now, to continue with the boys' plant the way it is. Eventually, uh, it will shift over. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got to correct you on that because that's not the well, case of the boys' plant. Well, no. At the boys' plant, we have a I'm contract saying. signed that we're going to buy a certain amount of power from there, no matter what. We own, we're buying it we, from ourselves. But, we own we, part of the plant. Yes, but we yes, but Clico manages it. We have that contract with Clico. Understand that our peak production power is bought from MISO, well, then it would not make from more, that. Let we, me say we, something. We it would make produce, more sense for Clico to could, come in rather than Bernhard, could, who does not have any ex- could, real expertise in this. We could, we could buy peak power from Boyce. We could call them and say, hey, we want to buy the peak power. But the cost is significantly higher than buying it from Miso. Okay, that's the second thing that I wrote down. Why Bernhardt? Why now? Exactly. I mean, I know that I know Why their Bernhardt? motives. Right. I know their motives. I get it because they're there. They're a capital venture deal and they're trying Just, to make they're a profit more, they're more a than, bit. They're more than that. But, okay, but from from this standpoint, what does it have to do with LUS other than just money? What but can they really do they, for us got, from a management they've standpoint? A, they've got a ton of money to invest. So, so right, right, Bernhard, sure. So for infrastructure purposes, that would be great. They and built, they just give it away and not expect a return on their money. Well, and that's, Isn't that so sweet? that's the well, question. Nobody's that's ever wonderful. claimed that, though. That's, that's, a, that's a silly thing to assume. Of course they want a problem. Nobody assumes but that. They, that's they the want point. a long-term business plan. I don't assume anything plan. with this bunch. Right. They want a long-term business plan. Well, and any company would or anybody that's looking to make some money. Warren, you're next. They have a ton of money. Of course they do. And there's a thousand hedge funds out there just like them that have four tons <laughs> right, of money. Right. And why so burn hard? And why, why, why burn hard? And why, why now? Why? Why? Because why? Because they are very well connected politically. Yes, they indeed. have been. And who did the introduction to them through here? The Picard Group, yes, exactly. who is well connected politically, who Mike Michaud works for, who, who um, 
Joel Robidoux's best friend, and I like both of them. Mm-hmm. You know, but I mean, look, mm-hmm. it, this is just human human dealing. Mm-hmm. Is that normally even in the great big companies, it's going to wind up that somebody in there knew right, somebody, somebody else. else. Just like when Slumberjay wound mm-hmm. up buying um, uh, Sedco drilling. Mm-hmm. Why did they buy Sedco? Because everybody said they were going to buy buy GCO, big seismic company out of Norway. Why did they buy Sedco? Because the president of Slumber Jane North America graduated from high school with, with the founder person. of Sedco. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody's making anything up. This was all in published reports that uh, Hank Perret had filed for a certain uh, names for companies that could possibly be named uh, operators of this uh, this thing on behalf of mm-hmm. who? I don't know. I guess Bernhard. Uh, and they were, but but several months prior to that, quite a while ago, I think, there was a, a law firm in Opelousas that filed and said that it was uh, illegal for the utility system to pay in lieu of taxes, which is not true. It's uncon- They said it was unconstitutional. And I'm wondering how all of these things play into this long before we even knew that this negotiation was going on. So those are the questions that people should have answered. And that I think it was wonderful to see the citizens last night at that Utilities Authority meeting so energized. I, I don't remember the last time I've seen people in Lafayette that energized about an issue, and it was great <laughs> to see it. I wish they when were energized people get involved about I just, everything. That's why I think it's important whether people agree or disagree that, that we can't have this conversation. Good job to you three panelists. Thanks. Because y'all, mm-hmm. you know, kind of batted it back and forth, but kept it civil so people could hear what was going on. <laughs> All right. So Stafford Barnett, Warren Cottle, Carol Ross, they are the fabulous team that make up Winging It Wednesday. And of course, Wednesdays just wouldn't be the same without all of you guys. Yeah. All right. We got a quick well, you break. you and I were both going last week. I, I got to tell you, we need to move the show. We're going to do six months in Louisiana, six months in Alaska. Oh, boy. Warren, you ready? You got no, a big No, I'd rather go somewhere other than Alaska. Oh, well, you're just fired. <laughs> all right. 731. We shall continue with the have Wednesday. other favorite places Italy. in the world. <laughs> We're Italy? going to Italy. Better food. <laughs> We're going to Florence. You're going to come Much in March? better food. <laughs> no, let's go to the Amalfi Coast. Okay. All right. Winging a Wednesday. We are back right. this morning. Right. Our panelists, Carol Ross and Warren Cottle and Stafford Barnett, back in to slug it out again. All right. Let's talk about Anybody and everybody that signed up to run in the third district congressional <laughs> race. All right, we're going to start with Carol on this one. All right, Carol, you get to go first. All right, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. what a mess. <laughs> um, what about the race? You think this will be an interesting race? Do you think it'll be an easy reelection win for for Higgins? What do you think? I, I don't know that anything is easy anymore in politics. Mm, to be honest with point. you, there's a big field out there too. Uh, you have at least five Democrats, at least maybe more coming in. Uh, two Republicans, Clay Higgins, the incumbent, and Josh Guillory, and the uh, independent, uh, Dave Longline. I really don't know much about any of these people. I'm, gonna ho- I'm hoping to have all of them on the uh, Ross report at one time or another before the election. Um, Higgins uh, seems to be very strong, though. I mean, he got, uh, what, 56% of the vote against a well-established Scott Angel the last time in the runoff. So... You know, and, and he beat how many candidates the last time? Like 14, I think. And so, uh, you know, the, Scott Angel and Clay Higgins made it into the uh, runoff. And actually, Angel led going into the runoff. But Clay Higgins pulled it out because because nobody trusted Angel. They saw him as a, you know, a political, poli- just a, another politician looking for another job. And Clay Higgins was a disruptor in the age of disruptors. And, uh, and uh, he pulled it out. He has had some actually um, some interesting uh, successes in the house on things that he knows a lot about Homeland security and also um, uh, the, the recent thing on ice, the uh, support of ice. So he's gotten some uh, very good and he's acquitted himself rather well. I think uh, I thought people, you know, were just holding their breath. So that I've, I've heard from <laughs> inside sources that some of his former colleagues in law enforcement have been waiting for him to screw it up big time. But he hasn't. He hasn't screwed it up yet. And that last vote, voting against that ridiculous bill that Trump held his nose and vote and signed, you know, the, the budget bill, sort of budget bill, uh, he voted against it. And so that was, uh, that was a big plus in his corner. Mr. Stafford Barnett, you are next, sir. I think 10 years ago, if, uh, if an elected member had gone and filmed a, a campaign commercial in a concentration camp, that probably would have spelled the end of their career. But we are living in a very different time. Uh, I think Clay Higgins is probably going to win this. I'm, I'm embarrassed to say that. Uh, I think that 
while he may have gotten some things accomplished while he's there, I think the the pandering uh, that he does uh, is pretty embarrassing. I think the video he just did where he dressed up in uh, coveralls and a cowboy hat and stood in a soybean field and and said that the tariffs are working uh, – when we see soybean prices dropping, our farmers are at risk, and now Trump is talking about giving out $12 billion in handouts to the farmers that he, it's his personal decision to hurt. Uh, I think when you see this kind of stuff, uh, you would hope that we would get somebody else there. I think we've got some qualified candidates. I think the Democrats have Mimi Methvin, who's, who uh, is running a decent, decently strong campaign. I don't think that she's – Stands a snowball's chance in hell to get it, but I, I admire them for putting up somebody. Um, I think uh, Guillory seems like a good guy. I've, I've talked to him once. Uh, I think he's a traditional Republican that would have a lot less baggage than, than the, the Kuyong we got in there now. So, um, like, I would love to see us have somebody uh, represent the seat that was once filled by Charles Bustani uh, that's a little bit less of a showboat. Um, and maybe ha- is, you know, a little bit more understanding of what's actually happening. So I think, I think Clay's going to win, but I would love to see Josh Guillory in that seat. Okay. Warren, what do you think, sir? Yeah. You know, we need somebody to fill that seat that was held once held by Edwin Edwards, um, John Bro, Jimmy Hayes, Chris John, Charles Bustani, and now Clay Higgins. You know, look, it's it's hard to defeat an incumbent congressman. It really, really is. And uh, I don't think he's done done a bad job at all. I mean, you know, some of the votes, whatever that he's made, that I disagree with. I'm going to disagree with with all of them up to a point. I say, hell, I don't even agree with myself all the time. <laughs> Warren, that's awesome. But uh, <laughs> you know, I, I I I will say this: if 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 they're going to run a personal attack campaign where you're going to attack him personally on his looks and on the way he sounds and blah, 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 and like calling him the Barney Fife of, uh, of, of Washington and all that, I don't think that plays very well anymore. You know, I think that that's what so much of the stuff in national politics has gotten down to now where it's just, you know, you like go out there and you crucify your, you, you try to tear your other opponent down. You know, it's, it, it's not about issues. It's not about what you can do or anything else. It's let's destroy the other person. And you make these personal attacks and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and it's just, you know, I just think it's just demeaning to the whole system. And regardless of who does it, whether his side does it, the mm-hmm. other side or whatever, it, it really does. But I think it's going to be probably an interesting campaign. I'd say it's, it, it's certainly his to lose. And uh, I do agree that there are some pretty good people in there. I've met Josh Guillory several times. I like him. And uh, I really and truly think that he's doing this to, to set the platform for another step. Okay. Agreed with that. All right. So let's go to the phone lines. On Wing and a Wednesday, you can always call in with your questions, your comments, all that kind of stuff. So, all right, this person, you are up. Go ahead. What uh, What are you thinking this morning, please? Well, good morning, Bernie. Uh, I'm, honestly, I'm one of the most guys that been displaced, been working all over the country and the world since uh, 2015. But to hear those two liberals you got on there constantly going against Clay Higgins, mm-hmm. he may not be the brightest person they have in Congress, but he's more honest than the rest of the crap that they keep spewing out of their mouths. I know you do it for the controversy and all that, but those guys, Warren is okay because he just screams for himself. But that other fellow, I don't remember his name, but every time I hear him, even when I'm out of state, I don't like him. He just is always on the Democratic side. You know, if you might personally not believe in abortion, but the Democratic Party does. So that means if you're a Democrat for abortion, if you don't want to open borders, if you're a Democrat, guess what? You're going to get open borders because that's what they want. And they vote in lockstep with each other where Republicans and independents tend to vote their own conscience. They may get pressure, but most of the time they'll stand up for themselves. Whereas the Democrats are going to vote party line ninety nine percent of the time. Okay, thank you for your thoughts. So you wanted to comment. I I, I think really it's. I'm wondering who the second liberal is, right? Because I get called a liberal all the no, time. No, I think you're saying Warren is the liberal, the he's, second liberal. He's the second liberal. Yeah, Warren is. That, yeah. Oh, was he, he talking about Carol? And then he backed off. He backed off, and he said something about oh, yeah, Warren. Oh, he must be talking about CNN Rob. Look at the end. Of, <laughs> look at the end of the day. I just literally sat there and said I supported a Republican. And the guy turns around and calls me a liberal. It it, it tells you the the mentality and the intelligence level of some of the Clay supporters. So there are a I, lot I wish, of liberal I wish him the best. Oh I, my god! I've said that, I've said that I think that there are some other Republicans out there. People. Uh, so anyway, good luck <laughs> oh, to the yeah. race. 
Way to go, Stafford. <laughs> hey, I'm not running for office. I don't care. <laughs> uh, obviously. <laughs> what do you say? What, what do you say to his point about you know the Democrats do they end up voting lock, stock, and barrel with one that another? I mean, true. they but do ninety nine percent of the time. Both parties. No, are do. you serious? You not see the, the Republicans, Republicans shooting at each other all the time yeah. in Congress. Like the they Democrats do, they shoot do more. Each other. The Democrats do more. Yeah, they end up they all oh. attack each other. Let's not pretend no, that no, the no. party's like. I, as I'm, far talking as about, I'm talking about block voting. Oh, when, block voting. Now, when, when they're in the, when they're in the, the minority, lines. as the Republicans <laughs> did at one point, when the Republicans are more in the minority, they voted lockstep. Now that the Democrats are in the minority, they're voting lockstep. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a common tactic. It's the same thing to pretend that only one party does. It's silly. No, that's not what I was suggesting. But okay, all right. Back to the phone lines, <laughs> caller. Go ahead. Hello. Okay, try again. Okay, I'm sorry. User error. I apologize. Go ahead now. I have it clearly put up. Go ahead. Okay, lockstep, voting lockstep. Okay, pro-abortion, uh, anti-borders, uh, you know, this health care burden that they put on everybody, and we're the low information. We're, we're you know, uh, people just aren't intelligent enough to see through all the bull. And this guy stands along with that, and he'll put people down who disagree with him. And, uh, you know, I, I put th- I put that specific how color down. How embarrassing for you to say that. Yeah, t- you said on, typical on Clay Higgins to, to supporters. Of Indiana, Whatever. You to get look, on there and, and, look you know, I, I don't agree with you know, what Clay you know, Higgins stands for. Live, man. I, I, I don't. I, listen, Clay, Clay has come out and done some good things. And I, and I pretty much said that in my opening comment. I've also said that he's done some really dumb things. And I think that he panders to people. Oh, and I think really people eat it. Yeah. Wait, hold on. Hold think, on. Only one person can talk at a time. Stafford, finish. I, I, th- your point. I think I think people eat it up. And it was proven by the fact that he got elected in the first place. His bona fides were the fact that he was a YouTube star. He didn't accomplish yeah. much no, before that, right? In fact, he was fact kicked that, off of uh, the most of the police forces he was, he was on. So, look, the, the guy's got the guy's got some personal issues. I'm telling you, I, there's a different Republican out there that I think would do a better job. Who doesn't job. have personal issues, man? Who doesn't, doesn't have personal yeah. issues? Who doesn't? Right. Who, who doesn't? doesn't? Right. I don't owe that much money in child let me tell, support. That, let me tell you, I have I've gone, I have gone to force. several. Hey, I wasn't buying bearing a police car. Your <laughs> have, you, have you ever been a police officer? No, I've, I never okay have. Okay with him. <laughs> well, let me tell you something. I've been to mo- many of his uh, speeches, his, his presentations. He makes no bones about the problems that, that he had in his life. He's the first candidate I've ever seen who actually does. He, his presentation was more like a confessional. I'm a flawed man. <laughs> I've done these these things, uh, but I've seen the right way to go. And to, to characterize all of his supporters as less than smart is not a good idea. Okay, back to the phone lines. Thank you, caller, for calling in. All right, this person's turn. You're next. Go ahead. Yes, ma'am. I'm one of the middle guys. Warren, I know Carol. What's the other gentleman's name? There's Stafford Barnett. There's Warren Cottle and Carol Ross. Okay, right. I don't. Want, I don't know this Stafford Barnett. Is he kind of new? To- okay. Um, no, he's been on the show for a while. You're going to have to try yeah, back because we couldn't connection. hear you. I'm sorry. All right, we'll go to the next person now. And remember, guys, make sure you turn your radio down and don't be on your speakerphone because we we have difficulty hearing you. Sorry about that. All right, you're next. Go ahead. Is it me? Yes, it is. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, I, and I I voted for Clay, and the thing that I didn't like was, like Kyle said, oh, the, the bill that uh, Trump had to hold his nose to sign, well, if Higgins hadn't voted to bring it out, no Democrats voted to bring it out, Republicans voted to bring it out, then none of the, vo- the Republicans voted to pass it, well, a couple did, to give the Democrats numbers to pass it. So if it was a parliamentary truth, and Clay was able to say, I voted against it. But what he doesn't tell you is that he voted for it before he voted against it. Had he voted against it, then it wouldn't have come out and the president so wouldn't you, have had So you didn't want the whole part. Congress to have an opportunity to vote on it? That's right. It's a parliamentary trick. And that's one of the things that you have to be smart enough to do. Because the Republicans didn't want it. Well, most of them didn't. And the Republican people didn't want it. 
And Trump didn't okay, want it. Thank you. Thank you for your call. Appreciate so there it. There you go. <laughs> we have to take a break. We'll come back with more telephone calls. The number is 232 1542. Nobody wanted it, but we got it. 1542. All right. And I just want to clarify, guys Stafford Barnett has been with us for a while. Um, and please, when you call in, his name is Stafford. So you can call him either Stafford or Mr. Barnett. But y'all all know his name. Now be nice because, you know, we can all come together and, and talk. But but let's be nice to each I other. I think it's a good sign that we have new callers. It means we've, well, we're growing our audience, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just want people to be nice to each other. We, <laughs> we don't have to agree, but we have to be nice. Stop talking to Moon and get back in here, Warren. Moon, Moon is such a distraction. Mm-hmm. All right. Sit Wasn't down, he on boy. the trip, on the Alaska trip? Yeah. I mean, he, wherever you went, there was Moon holding court. He was. It was hilarious. You gotta <laughs> love the guy. He just told me he got back from vacation. I was like, that's a hell of a vacation. You can work. and Oh, it was fun. I have to tell you, it was glorious. It All was right. Fun. It was. Back to the phone lines. This person has been waiting patiently. All right, you're next. Go ahead. Hey, can y'all hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, I just wanted to tell uh, Stafford, thank you for your opinion. Uh, I know everybody's getting all uppity and wanting to, <laughs> to scream and holler at him this morning, but without his opinion, I mean, you 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 don't know what other people are thinking. Uh, so, thank you, Stafford. I'm not going to come on here and bash you today. Hey, I appreciate that. <laughs> and thank you. Well, that's why k does the vigorous debate that thank we you. have, like yeah. I'm winging it. Thank you. And, you know, and I really do want to talk about that point for just a minute, because I do find something extremely frustrating is when people have shut down their minds. And I have found that in the last year and a half, that in this town, that has happened a lot. And because you may disagree with someone ph- philosophically, they suddenly don't want to have anything to do with you. Yeah. Well, that's ridiculous. How do we grow as individuals? And as people and as a community, if we stop talking to each other. Surround yourself with people you disagree with. Exactly. And and if you surround yourself with people you agree with, that fosters uh, typically negative consequences. Look, here's the thing. If you surround (laughs) yourself. Thank you, Dr. Barnett. No, but, you know, he's got a great (laughs) These pronouncements on high. But he really does. (laughs) Dr. Phil. (laughs) Dr. Dr. Any, anything for you, Carol. I think. (laughs) If there is one thing that just has Stafford baffled. That's childhood hunger. What? Oh, Dr. Phil. <laughs> Dr. Phil PSA. Oh, Lord. So anyway, to all of you people who do call the show and may disagree um, or you disagree with uh, the, the station or the show or whatever, the point is that we can listen and talk about it. Because if you decide you listen and you, you don't even hear somebody's opinion, how can you know what they say or how can you know what they really think? You can't speak for a group of people. All right, but we will go to the phone lines and speak to this caller. You're next. Go ahead. Yes, I'd like to make a comment. Sure. Uh, I'd like to recommend that Stafford uh, reverse his strategy. If he wants Josh Guillory to win, he needs to praise Higgins (laughs) and back Josh Guillory. (laughs) You you know, it's funny he said that. Because I, I actually okay, agree with you. him on that. <laughs> when, we, when we were talking about uh, deconsolidation, I uh-huh. said, I should just come out and say that I, uh, I oppose it. All right. Because I'm pretty sure that everybody would immediately go, well, if Stafford opposes, I'm going to uh, support it. You're not, you're not supposed to say the D word. Uh-uh. The people who are proposing these amendments, it's uh, not deconsolidation. Don't say the D word. Oh. Giving us Lafayette some autonomy. You know, it's funny, but that's kind of part of that discussion. When you have to name call... As part of your discussion, not you, I'm talking about some other situation. It really floors me. I'm like, these are grown adult people. So, so said having conversations with each other, yeah. but they start out their conversation insulting one another. I'm like, really? And it shuts down it's, the conversation. It does. It? It's, a, it's the consequence of social media. It's a, I, I personally I believe that. Oh, I, no. I, it goes back centuries ago. Well, you know, I, I think it's being aggravated. I think it's being aggravated. And Warren was around. <laughs> that's Warren was right. Around. That's all right. right. Multiple how many, centuries. How many times have we heard people say that we spend too much time talking at each other instead of talking to yeah, each other? And that's true. That's uh, right. It is. It Talk is. To me, Warren. And it's that's when I me. first heard that in, in, in 1954. I think it was May the 3rd. And he was 13. Blue no. Mountain. That's right. <laughs> when he got the tablets from... God. Yeah. Did I ever tell 15, you about no, 15, no, 10, 10, I told y'all. I told y'all he's a Highlander. He's I been around he for a, a thousand years. Did I ever tell you about the time I jumped ship in Hong oh Kong? No. Okay, no, I don't want to hear about that. <laughs> We're going to the next <laughs> caller. Please, <laughs> caller, go ahead and save the show. Go ahead. 
Good morning again, guys. Uh, <laughs> Stafford, I'm the one you called the low-information voter, sir, and i got to tell you that I didn't say anything ugly about you except for I didn't agree with you politically, but you turned around and insulted me exactly what Democrats do. You proved the point that liberals <laughs> cannot do anything but personal attack. I don't agree with your politics. I don't agree with the Democrat politics, and a lot of times I don't agree with the Republican politics because I am for less government, less taxes, let's not kill our babies, let's get these people out of here, let's not judiciate or, or change our laws through the judicial branch, that's the legislature's job, let's do what we're supposed to do, how our Constitution was set up, let's go back and be originalists, let's do this thing the right way. But, you know, you, typical Democrat, insult people because they don't agree with you. So, so, so calm, calm down for a second. I'll, I'll, I'll make you. Wait, let me finish, down. sir, because y'all okay. gotta, I'll, make, I'll make you an offer that I make. I have listened the majority. to this show for okay, years, and I've listen. always felt this way about you, but I never called in about it. So I am, I am not a low-information voter, sir. I may not have the college education, but I pay very close attention to where my tax dollars go. Very close attention. So don't assault the rest of the hardworking people of Acadiana because we don't agree with you and vote other ways, saying we're stupid or low information. Maybe we just see the real picture and you're believing all the lies, just okay. like Peter Stroke tried to tell the lies to Congress. You know, you can see it in his face. There's another Democrat. He may be masked as a Republican or a centralist, but you're all big government, socialist, world domination individuals that want one world government instead of letting everybody do their own thing. Okay. All right. Thank All right. you. So, so, so let's, another so let's, brilliant caller. <laughs> Stafford, so I'll make you the same offer I make the majority of people that I disagree with. Let's get offline. Send your information in. I'll pay for the coffee and let's have a conversation. What's your email so you can send it? I'm not posting my email out here. He can oh. email. He can, I'm not putting oh, my email. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's so fine. Email, email, email the me. radio station. Email it to One quick thing. This is, a good, this is a good no, rule it isn't. of thumb. Good rule of thumb. Warn your father. Do not assume, assume that anybody who listens to KPL is a low information voter. Well, they make a choice right. to listen to KPL because right. they are informed and they want to be more well, informed. Well, and that's what I was driving at earlier this morning is that people have suddenly said, oh, well, it's this or it's that. Um, no, it isn't. And you don't know because you don't listen. But we can have a great conversation after you've tuned in and you know what it's, it's about. Let's talk about it all day. You disagree all day with whatever the shows may be. But how are you going to know what your argument is if you haven't listened to yeah, figure it so out Bernie, for yourself? I'll tell you, the only disappointment I have about this morning is that we didn't get to trash that thug, John Brennan. Okay, well, we we'll don't definitely be able to have time to do it later. <laughs> I, th- I, I, I want to point out as well. Him. I just hey, the, tell the, the truth about him. <laughs> okay. Uh, the, that, that is trashing him. <laughs> I think, and, and I, I also want to point out, I really hope that you take me up in the solver. I think it's very important to have long conversations with people as opposed to short ones. So please email the station. The coffee will be on me, and I'd love to sit down with you. Okay. Um, I'm going to email just so I can get some free coffee. <laughs> I want to I You're welcome to. Hey, wait. The coffee's always free at Cape uh, Oh, that's right. Man. But I want a chocolate mocha sippy. So, you know. On me. Okay, good. I like it. All right. Coming up now on 758, that does conclude this episode of As <laughs> the Stomach <laughs> Turns. <laughs> no, no. I'm sorry. Winging it Wednesday in the world. And this that is it your is. announcer read name. Yes. <laughs> I want to thank you so much for joining us. All right. Warren Cottle, Carol Ross, Stafford Barnett. Thanks for not punching kicking or biting one another. It was another glorious day. The day's day. not over, and yeah. Bernie, Bernie Mark will be on this afternoon giving us a full report about the yes. meeting yesterday and yes. about where so he sees it. tune in, folks. Yeah. I'm sure it'll be Ross very report, interesting. Two four. Okay, coming up now on 759. Today, another hot day. Okay, it's going to be sweltering. Partly cloudy. A high at 95. Partly cloudy tonight. 73. The 97 for tomorrow. <gasps> but showers are possible by the weekend. Yay! Hopefully it'll cool some things off by the weekend. Coming up now on 8.